All my flaws, all my downs And still wanna stay around You've seen me fall, help me Hey, hello! Let's do a little flashback in memory or down memory lane or whatever the expression is. Here is something I'm looking at uh, Facebook reminding me that uh, six years ago, July 4, 2015, I had a cup of coffee, this cup of coffee, and then took that into a 3D rendering. And I figured it's been at least a few hours, four hours in fact exactly, since I had my early morning coffee. So I want this coffee now. So I'm going to right click this here and copy that and switch over to Howler. Okay, so here I'm starting Howler and I'm not taking the latest version here. Um, it's a version that already has uh, the ability to restore images uh, from, uh, let's say, if the program was abruptly stopped or crashed or something, but I'm not going to go there. I'm going to go start from scratch. This is version 2020. Um, it is the one that you also may know as Howler version 13. And of course, the latest one is 2022. We just started shipping that. Uh, beginning, uh, I think in May, we started development. And now in early July, we are shipping version 2022. But this is the free giveaway that you have at uh, Software on Sale. Uh, if you go to thebest3d.com slash SOS, you will find the references to that. All right, so I have just copied that picture of the coffee cup. If I control V, uh, maybe I need to first get some keyboard focus. There it is. Um, I have the image from the clipboard. I can just replace the current image right there with this one. All right, so I'm going to store that. I have a bunch of images here with skies. Uh, I might keep them. We'll see. Um, but so here is the picture I want to use. And in fact, I want to take that uh, coffee cup, just the coffee, the frothed surface, all over the image. So I'm going to need a selection mask, like this one here, the ellipsic, uh, ellips elliptical selection. And it'd be nice if you have a reference point of where the center exactly lies. Sometimes it doesn't matter. But let's say we do want that. Uh, you want to use the sidebar and scroll down to the bottom where you have the extra information, like some artist guides. And the, this one here will intersect at the middle of the picture. So you can use that quite nicely to do some sort of a selection. But of course, it it begs the question as to whether your, co your, your picture was really taken that way. Right? So when you're done with that selection, maybe you'll do it again. Maybe you'll go down the uh, diagonal. Well, it's not the same aspect ratio. But let's say we do this and then we want to shift it. Use the control key to move it around. And then maybe we want to soften that selection. Right now it's a cutoff and we want to do a little bit of a blur on the selection. So go to the selection menu and uh, blur the selection. There's a Gaussian blur, there's a box filter selection. That one is nice. You can see it also as a grayscale. Don't go up too high. It's going to go into the the edge of the coffee mug, the rim of it. So let's go something like this. And now you can pick this up as a brush, uh, copy the selected as a brush, and the selection is gone. We don't need the, the guides anymore. We can turn that off too. Where was it? Artist guides right there. And so now if we are on the tool here, the, uh, the, the brush tool, let's make sure we preview. Here it is. We should see the brush, there it is. Uh, it's too small. We certainly have a default size that's not at 100%. Let's bring it back up. It may also not be necessarily at full opacity. Make sure it is fully opaque. Otherwise, you're going to see it very barely there. Uh, and you're going to need to smear it before you can start seeing it. So let's go make sure it is uh, fully opaque. And then so you can, you can stamp it. Best to use this option here. There's these three dots. That's for a... Uh, a stamp sequence. So you say click here, stamp it down, click here, stamp it down, and so on. So you could do that and fill it in with a couple of clicks. Uh, perhaps even better, make it symmetrical. There is an option here to uh, to do the symmetry tool, and you can do the vertical symmetry or horizontal symmetry, or you can do the horizontal uh, mirror. Even the current image that's there will be mirrored. So you, you only paint in the upper right quadrant, right? If you go in the lower left, nothing changes. But if you go in the upper right, it will take that. So you could use that to uh, to create something 
uh, a little bit more symmetrical. And let's say this is what we keep. So let's clear all of that symmetry thing, close that. Let's turn off the mouse, uh, the, the, the brush preview. Where is it? Where's the eye? The eye of the tiger, there it is. Uh, so we have an image that is symmetrical. Let's also make it uh, seamless. Um, there is an image uh, make seamless like this and maybe overlap a little bit more. Uh, let's remember the number 21 by 21, just in case we have something that we need to do the same way. So 20 by 20, that's uh, 2020 vision right there. If I can get to stick with it, there you go. And apply that. So now we have a symmetrical, but also a tileable image. Uh, seamless. Let's go store that. That's a really valuable asset. And let's use that as the color map, but also as the height map. So switch over here to the swap image and load this color. And then switch back to the main image. You can see up here, uh, Howler 13 main image. If you switch to the swap image, it shows swap. So swap is like the back of your canvas. Uh, you can swap between the main and the swap buffer. Uh, so now I'm back on the main image. Uh, this one really will be interpreted as a grayscale. And if I want to be in control, uh, you actually go and convert it to a grayscale. Maybe with the colored box, so you get to say how much contrast you want on that. You can always adjust the contrast further. And in fact, you should probably also do this here, expand the dynamic range. So you have dark that goes all the way to black, and you have bright that goes all the way to white. Uh, bright parts and so at this point we have a nice elevation map let's store that and we have this color map right so let's go and render that both of these are symmetrical and tileable so we can uh, go into the rendering uh, perhaps we want to add some erosion with that too so let's go first into the transform filter for 3d designer or erosion could also be calculated and then subtracted from here under the stylized erosion let's do that one first um, so that will calculate the gullies and there's really not many here long ones and so on not so impressive i'm going to go a different route let's go to the transform 3d designer and in there we have the erosion not enabled by default but it's turning this into a 3d Low, a 3D view based on that grayscale elevation map. You can also use the color as um, you know to, to actually show. So from the from the map here. So remember we had this uh, the the coffee browns in there. So it's showing there maybe a little bit more color for the ambient light here. And then let's expand the uh, designer interface and go to enable the, uh, there it is, erosion, right? Just click anywhere on that, uh, on that uh, scrolling thing here and you can on the slider and initially it takes a little while as it calculates and then it's really more like an intensity control for carving it out. But here you could say, well, let's give it a bit more rainfall. Let's give it 50. Uh, another thing you can do is uh, decrease the flatness threshold and that means there's more places where it can start eroding let's say 20 so it will show it will take longer and it will show more uh, erosion um still not super impressive because the terrain is not really it's already very noisy to begin with so what you could do is uh adjust now here a little bit of sediment deposits especially along the steep walls that will look really nice uh, you know, like the Grand Canyon kind of thing or the Monument Valley uh, boulders and that sort of things. And um, another thing you could do, if you don't like the coloring, uh, you can do a new one. You can calculate, uh, create a new texture, right? And that will replace, that will go into the, the back color. And so now you have three layers of elevation-based coloring. You have the green at the bottom. We call it grass, but it could be a different color, right? You could say, well, there's some some yellowish uh, dust from the desert, something like brownish gray, perhaps. And and then you have the, the rocks that are also red rocks, maybe a little bit deeper red or more yellowish orange, something like that. And just one more, which is the top level. And that is uh, perhaps snow. If we want it to be a little bit more of a bluish snow, we can do so. That's, uh, you know, thinking ahead, if we're going to do a scene where the sky is going to be blue, it might actually help if the lighting already kind of incorporated that into the, the coloring of the snow here. Although, I mean, if we render it on our side, we will have that effect based on the global illumination anyway. 
This is more like if you want to bake that into uh, to to use it in, in a game, for example. Uh, so I'm going to go actually with uh, with the fully white color for the snow, and then the light the color of the light will really impact it. Uh, in fact, we have some choices here for this light source. We can do a little bit of a shadow cast in this preview. Uh, bring the altitude down. Uh, maybe increase the, the distance, that sort of thing. So, all right. Um, and again, that's if we decide to actually render it here in 3D Design. And we have two places where we can render it. And of course, you could export the whole thing and then render it somewhere else. Uh, what I'm going to do here is also add a little bit of uh, snow um, sediments so that the snow is actually filling in some lower valley areas too. Uh, wherever the sediments were from the eroded parts. All right, so that's it. I'm going to go store the erosion just in case we want to uh, use that uh, for further calculations of eroded, erosion effects. Uh, we can also do the height maps, of course. That's the most important one we need to store. And then the texture, we still have it in the swap image, so not absolutely needed. But uh, let's say we want to also do a, a render, uh, maybe with a little bit more of pre-filtering here. Um, and some anti-aliasing, uh, four or five passes, and uh, render that. Click OK. And so that's not using the GPU, by the way. This is a CPU-based rendering, but it's a starter, right? It's not your final render, of course, and uh, you could do a little bit of basic animation there, too. Uh, let's store that and forget it, because we're going to go back to the height map that we stored. There it is. Uh, the color map we had stored, uh, it's still in the swap image anyway. And here's the erosion. And if we want, we could actually use that to subtract a little bit more erosion from the height map. Right? So you start with the height map loaded. You go to the options uh, for the, I think the options are above here. And you, you calculate a subtraction of the erosion gullies. So subtract, there you go. Now that may be too much. So maybe use the interactive undo here, and you just give it a little bit. OK, so that's the terrain I want to use. Now we can also turn this into an animation. So I'm going to go go to the animation and create um, 30 frames, let's say, let's say uh, 66 frames. And that will, that will play over two and a half seconds. So it's really calculated for a very short rendering sequence. And uh, we still have the swap image right here with the coloring. We could actually do some coloring there too on based on the erosion, right? When you think about it, when there is erosion, there may be some vegetation there. There may be some in the valleys at the crease at the bottom of the valley. There may be a little bit of uh, uh, darkness from dust that gets from mud that gets accumulated there. So it might be interesting to actually change the coloring a little bit here by subtracting. Uh, likewise, and maybe even adding some color, like make it a bit more of a dark green or a moss color, whatever you want to do to add uh, some, some impression there that there is indeed something that happened, not just a change in elevation, but some erosion contributed to some vegetation there of some sort. Uh, <clears throat> so let's go and store this one and then go back to the main the elevation map, now we are ready to animate. So I'm going to go and minimize this thing, the side uh, view, and move this over here with the control and shift, or you can simply use this uh, tool here, the little pointer hand, to move this to the side, because I want this space on the left here available for the interface. And so here's the interface. Uh, under the transform, just below the 3D designer, you have the puppy ray. And this version, uh, this older version of Howler had two versions. Uh, I would say ignore the regular one, the CPU. Ignore that. Go straight to the GPU. Right. We actually got rid of the CPU version recently. Uh, I think version 14 or uh, version 2021 no longer has the CPU version. Or maybe it's in a, in a separate menu for old stuff and, you know, for, for old time's sake. But uh, the GPU version is the one you want to use. And... Give it a second to do its initial rendering. So what I'm going to do here is uh, show more of the interface. This is the old interface where there were two tabs. We've simplified it a little bit uh, since then. Uh, so if you've never played with this, it might be a little bit overwhelming. It's easier with the newer version. But if you get used to this, 
you might likewise actually enjoy some of the features here that you don't have anymore. Some of the controls, they're a little bit different. For instance, it's all black here, and we want to enable so global illumination. You have to check that. That's enabled by default now. Uh, the amount of global illumination, you see that here. You can make that brighter or darker. Uh, let's go to camera controls. You have move and camera turn. So I'm going to go move the camera over here. And now here is the time where I wish I had my own sky. All right, so uh, let's, let's go back out quickly here. Undo this rendering and go back to these skies we had earlier. There is a sky or two. Um, these are probably perfect here. Seamless. I think what they started is a picture from Pexels, uh, some free photography picture samples, and then I made it uh, seamless and scaled it sideways so that it was quite suitable for uh, a brush that we, that is going to be used uh, in the sky. So the sky has a big surrounding cylindrical um, sky uh, sky map, and I simply load this as a brush. Right? It's a custom brush now. Uh, I'm not going to paint with it. I just need it in the brush so that the papillary renderer sees it, because if I want to use my custom image as a sky, it's going to ask for it to come from the brush image. Uh, I can certainly uh, temporarily check whether it's there. Uh, if, I, if I'm in the, uh, in the paint tool and I enable the preview with the eye here, yep, it's now in the brush. It's a very big image, so it's showing really big. I'm going to hide it and simply go back to uh, the rendering for the transform. And let me check my battery. It's getting low. I'm on I'm on battery power here. Uh, so here's the Puppy Ray GPU. And so this time I want my other sky, which is going to be uh, selected here, skies. And sure enough, there it is. That's my custom brush. Custom brush image is going to be usable as the sky image back here. Right. And so that's uh, pretty good, but the sky, the, 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 the fog that we add is not really good now because the coloring doesn't match so much. We need to, first of all, have the, the fog a little bit farther out. And then we also need to have it more yellowish in color. So click the fog color, go to something like yellow orange, maybe even more reddish, something like this. And that will be a little bit more in tune with the sky colors. Uh, the the sky the, the light of the the sunlight could also be more of a deep red now, as it's uh, entering the the lower zone, and we may also want to make it much bigger. So 123 maybe. There you go. Um, what else do we want to make this kind of really interesting? Let's move down. Let's move the camera down a little bit. And so let's say we have even some water. So I'm going to I'm going to need to move the terrain down until I see the water. I think the water is enabled by default. There's different types of water or none, but it's enabled here. I'm going to go with the Perlin noise, but I need to move the terrain down until the water appears. There it is. Now it's not showing the refraction by default. It's not enabled, at least not in this version. The newest version has it enabled by default. Now I have it. I need to set the color. That's under the world, I think. I have some extra coloring here for the scattering. I'm going to do much stronger scattering, but now it's a little bit too too bright, so I'm going to go with a different color, like a much darker uh, color like this. Uh, in fact, it shouldn't be really bluish. If it's reflecting as well, it might be more of a reddish tint or something like that. But that's up to you, whatever you want to show, more of a muddy color or something like that. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, we need some some terrain uh, texture here. If you look on the right side, that terrain, uh, let's, let's bring it down here. Let's move the camera down, not the terrain up. There you go. Um, we, we have some texture we can put on the terrain here. Bump map, All right? So let's go with uh, something like the, the riverbed. That's a nice collection of bumps. And so let's say we want to just do a little sweep, a little animation going from left to right or something like that or the other way. So let's go from here. So here we go from, let's see how far left we want it. Oh yeah, let's take this. This is pretty good. Let's go from about here, set the keyframe, and then go to the last frame. And we only have about 60 frames, so this is going to be very short-lived. But we want to get to the point where we see the sun. 
or we move this way and then we also move the sun why don't we do that like have the sun in a fast movement here a little bit farther out uh, maybe a little bit up as well or maybe down actually longer shadow is more interesting um, let's do that let's save it here and let's do a little bit better on the quality let's do high quality there you go um, we have pretty much everything we could want here in terms of defects. I mean, there's perhaps a little bit more with the caustics. We didn't do any caustics here, so this adds, this takes longer. Uh, but it, in some places, you'll see a little bit of a, a, a lighting show uh, due to the caustics. Uh, might want to increase the intensity here. Perhaps this will help. And I would say that's it. Uh, I mean, you can become an expert at playing with all these parameters uh, somewhat more. Maybe some ground fog, one more. There you go. So we have a little bit of ground fog that we see, especially here against the dark areas of the mountains sticking out. We have some nice clouds. We have the sun moving. Let's go and render it. Now, this would be high quality or perhaps final render or even better. Right? Sometimes it's better to even give it more than whatever the default is. 60 passes of anti-aliasing when you do uh, high quality or when you do a uh, final render. You, you might do even more than that. Right? So I'll leave that up to your judgment as to at what point is it good enough. Um, here you see nice a uh, little bit of uh, refraction and uh, caustics lighting and uh maybe we one more thing we'll we'll increase the wave height we'll say let's give it about four or three yeah, let's give it four render that then we'll just increase the waves a little bit now it's not actually displacing them it's just playing with the normal vectors it's doing it uh, or uh, changing the normal vectors so from far away it looks correct but if you're actually at the water level you'll notice it's not really lifting it up uh, but that's good enough the the whole play the lights uh, the light rays go through the caustics are happening uh the refraction uh the fresnel angle is respected there's a lot of things going on here all right so then finally we have uh, final render and now it's going to be time to take a cup of tea <laughs> a cup of tea or coffee uh and uh, let it render all this and we'll be back when it's over